Rodimus, cool your exhaust pipes. We've got a mission to do. And we have orders. That Blaster is uniquely skilled to help us out with. And I'm all for any Autobot soldiers ready and willing to go to battle to prove themselves as useful to Ultra Magnus. I'm a company man, loyal to the label. Brother, I'm ready to... Soundwaves Radio Project. I've picked it up once or twice, scanning frequencies. Nothing but feel-good nonsense, like, I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour, or something like that. Magnus wants me to download any information I can get, then destroy what remains. Emphasis on destroy. I'm on it. I downloaded all the information from Soundwave's setup. And then you destroyed it, right? No. I left when Slicer told me to. So you failed. You can't say I didn't try, Blaster. <sighs> Let's hear what the Decepticons hear. It's quieter in here than I'm used to. I was rushed out of the shop in Gold City during the Decepticon attack. Had to break everyone down. Annoyingly, they didn't survive reassembly. No one told you to carry everyone with you. The ones you leave behind will always have necessary parts. Can't be too careful. What if I'd left this limb behind? What would you do the next time you blew yourself up? Bold of you to assume I'll need a replacement. I'm fine. If I know how you operate, and I do, you're on schedule to lose an arm next. On schedule? I was right. This one's perfect. I'll add a paint job to my ever-growing list of work for you and Ultra Magnus. We Autobots are the reason that you can continue your work. You'd think you would sound happier considering we're winning. Winning and losing is all the same from my workbench. I'll be putting the pieces back together no matter what. How noble of you, Ratchet. But cheer up. I'm not gonna die nor need to be reassembled. I've yet to meet a bot who doesn't break that promise slicer. But it's nice to pretend. Ratchet has never enjoyed relocation. He gets stuck in the past, thinking he can bring it back or keep time from moving forward. If he has to move, if time keeps flowing, things fall apart. He loses things. I've always held him in high regard. But this is where our philosophies differ. I can't afford to hold on to the past. I just keep driving forward. It keeps me alive. The newly named New Kaon is a place for us to rebuild. To regroup. I wasn't sure about Megatron's choice of name at first, but it's got a nice ring to it. It's a reminder of why we fight. That we don't get to see the defeat of the Autobots without remembering how we got here. I'm the only one who would say this. But Ratchet and Soundwave have similar ways of looking at the universe. Soundwave wants to honor the past, while Ratchet wants to resurrect it. Maybe that's why I keep listening to Soundwave's voice through Blaster's head. Hearing Soundwave fret about how soldiers' pasts will affect their futures reminds me of Ratchet's ways of holding on to the dead, both hoping that they'll find a key to the future. I know that there are more of us, more Decepticons who are listening to this frequency but haven't reached out. I know better, of course. You can't change what's happened before. You don't know who's gonna win tomorrow's battle. I don't have all the answers for you, but know this. You're not alone in this war. You never were. And when you're ready to roll into our new home, I am waiting for you. You just figure out who's the most powerful now, what they need from you, and boom, you're good. What isn't good is I'm 100% sure that Metroplex has moved. It isn't very much when compared to the Titan's size. But any movement is worth noticing. And that includes the familiar flyer scout in the area from above. Most folks would get nervous if they saw airstrike patrol on the way to their destination. More so if they saw jet fire watching from afar. But I'm not built like most. 
added chaos has never been a problem for me. I need to find Goldbug for the next part of my mission. But I relish the chance to do some scouting before running into the undersized ex-warlord. The wreckers scout by planting explosives. Maybe I'll get lucky and Goldbug hasn't made any real progress in taking control of Metroplex. It's easy to imagine the angry brat stumbling around in here lost. Though I suppose I'd hear him yelling about it. Blasters build, plus Soundwave's radio frequency makes for an excellent antenna. Most other comms are fried this far into the static zone. Makes it easier to send out a signal to the wreckers when I'm finished with Goldbug. But even this new toy has its limits. Static distortion interrupts Soundwave's naive hopefulness. That sound good to you? Deceptive. Fight. Care about. No smug jokes. No songs. No laughs. Alas, poor Blaster. What a waste. Fortunately, I can use the static as well. Soundwave's voice becomes a compass. The less of him I hear, the closer I am to the source of the interference. After the dead dark hallways and the rest of Metroplex, this room practically blinds me with its brightness. There's no question what I'm looking at here. Jetfire told me about Starscream's indestructible spark more than once. If I do need to set off my explosives, I have no doubt this spark will survive the destruction. Everything else, though? Debatable. Sounds like... Panic. The words aren't coming from the radio, even though they're full of static. It's not Blaster's voice, or Sandwave's, but I should recognize it. It's coming from Metroplex. It repeats every few cycles. Goldbug. Slicer? Thought Jetfire gotcha. Where'd you go after my city fell? Running back to your old job with Ultra Magnus? Pfft. <laughs> Never. Too many rules. Not enough excitement. When I heard you escaped, I went underground. I'm pretty good at surviving explosions. Haven't been nearly as busy as you, though. With Metroplex awake, it's a wonder you're not stomping across Cybertron right now. Boosting Goldbug's ego feels like claws scratching chrome. There's no reason behind what he does. It's all about power while lacking purpose. Ultra Magnus at least has a plan. Metroplex is a bigger brat than Optimus in more ways than one. He'll start up and then shut down, but there isn't a way of triggering it myself. What is that static? You causing that? Let me introduce you to my partner. Using parts from Blaster and code from Soundwave, we've got ourselves one of the only ways to listen in on Decepticon plans within the static zone. You know what I miss? Music scene. Folks don't, but they're being a safe place to- Can it shut up? No. My lies usually have a purpose. Of course I can turn it off. I should turn it off when I'm not signaling the wreckers. But Soundwave's voice is better company than Goldbug's. Tell me more about the unexplained activations. You rev your engines asking repeat questions, Slicer? I was hoping your work would inspire me. Fortunately, Goldbug isn't as good at this kind of work as I am, and certainly isn't patient enough to compensate for his lack of skill. I was able to think before you and that dang talking head of yours showed up. If you don't take that thing away, I'm gonna punt it into space! Ah, uh, Goldbug. Always blaming the brains of the operation. I didn't miss this at all. Although it affords me an opportunity. Outside, slightly farther from the center of the interference, I can send a signal to Rodimus. It's time to send in the wreckers. Here, Soundwave's voice is almost as clear as the sky above. 
I almost like hearing him wax on about the connections between art and resistance. Letting myself silently debate his overly precious arguments. The kind of things you do when there isn't a war. But Jetfire is making his move. Wish the crew could get here faster. For more reasons than one. I set up a lot of bombs. But I'm suddenly doubting my ability to make this problem go boom. A first. Jetfire. No matter what, the Waking Titan will bring one of us down. Whether it's him, me, or Goldbug inside. I don't for an instant believe that Goldbug is controlling that thing. Normally I'm confident I will come out on top. I'm a wrecker. Best of the best. But I don't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Titans. For a moment, Jetfire hangs in the air before doing the math. When he finally backs off, I realize two things. The first is that if I had died in that moment, I wouldn't have known what I was dying for. I could blame Soundwave for that. And it is far less important than the second revelation. The Titan stopped when Jetfire did. When Metroplex activates, how long is he awake for? What? Answer me! You watch yourself, Slicer. I get you've been underground or whatever, but I'm still in charge. Goldbug still thinks he can boss me around after losing his entire city and army. Unfortunately, I have to work with that for now, until the others arrive. Ultra Magnus' orders were to stay in character as long as I might squeeze details out of old GB. I try to tell myself that's a good enough reason. I've been told some of you listen while you're on patrol or front line. In order to remember why- The front line patrol, huh? What a beautifully creative idea, Soundwave. This bird air strike patrol. Status report. Stormcloud here. Systems green. Nightflight here. Tailwind was reporting difficulties with his comm earlier, so I can answer for myself this close to you guys. But the interference means our comms don't have the same range as usual. Same all around. And it's getting worse. Bad enough for us to turn around and report that this was a lost cause? Absolutely not. We pledged an oath to the Decepticon resistance. And I'm not about to- Ah! Tailwind! No! Get down! Where are they coming from? That's right. Come at me! Soundwave reminded me that sometimes, it's easier to deal with these things on the front line, instead of in the shadows. I tallied up all the non-Titan threats in the area. Airstrike Patrol, Goldbug, and Jetfire. If I throw them at one another, I can thin the numbers a bit. Soundwave went and revealed the patrol's position and everything! Not exactly accurate, but as far as Goldbug's concerned, Soundwave could have said anything while I was outside. I know you're not a patient bot! So let's bring him down to us, boss! <laughs> boss, focus on- Come at me, you little bug! I'll do you like I did- This is for Stormcloud, you Autobot scum! Not today, Flybot. You monsters! Not the first bot to call me that. Soundwave would have come up with something more clever. Any nanocycle now. Shut up. You're dead. Goldbug is next on the list. If he can't keep control enough to focus on a battle, he's more of a liability than a help and the exception to Ultra Magnus' rules apply. He thinks he's smarter than everyone on the planet. As long as I let him keep thinking that, I've got him where I need him. Ugh. Let's be very clear. I'm not dying at the hands of a failed wrecker. You're an overgrown patch of rust on my hinges, you know that? Goldbug's too busy yelling to listen to our surroundings. 
Think I don't know you're still loyal to Ultra Magnus? No records just walk. But you had a use. Right up until that damn radio frequency nonsense. If your lies are getting sloppy, Slicer, you're done. Soundwave's voice crackles nearby, even as the wind around us picks up. I can't focus on the words, at least not the ones he's saying now. Goldbug got Gold City by being vicious, by scaring folks and stomping out those he couldn't. For what reason, though? I'm not going to die pointlessly to a bot without purpose. Hey, boss! Looks like somebody wants a word with you. What are you... When you think about everything he's done, Goldbug really should have seen that coming. I don't hear or feel Metroplex moving, so my hypothesis about how close Jetfire has to be is right. I've still got to finish dealing with him, though. Slicer? Jetfire. Look at us. Two traitors to Gold City. I can't technically be a traitor, since I didn't believe in the first place. But the words get his attention. Some bots deserve to be betrayed. And some deserve loyalty? I mean to mock him, but it feels like a revelation. I want to answer that question for myself. Want to ask who deserves my loyalty and why. Great thing about my line of work, though. It's really easy to drown out the sound of my own voice. The blast wrecks my arm. I don't know if Ratchet was right about my having a schedule, or if he inspired my stunt, really. I'd like to think he'd be proud of my ingenuity. I wonder why he comes to mind. Now there's a bot who's found his purpose. There's a different energy to him now than back in Gold City. That death brought him to life. I get why it matters. Why it is worth it. You think that's enough to stop me? That your tricks will keep me from his spark? Urgh! When I see the rest of the crew, I am of two minds. Jetfire is strung up because he was fixated on his past mistakes with Starscream. It makes him vulnerable. On the other hand, I wonder if any of the Wreckers would fight like this for me. No Drift! Stop! Ultra Magnus needs him alive to activate Metroplex! Alive or uninjured? I don't know enough yet. This'll keep him down. I'm winning. Ultra Magnus will get his Titan, and all his enemies, Autobot and Decepticon alike, will fall at his feet. I'm proud of my work. That's almost like having a purpose, right? As you come to New Kaon, and we find each other, tell me about the world you're fighting for, because there are others fighting for it too. Soundwave rambles, but I can't help but wonder what any of us would tell him if we could.